Jane is 26 and in August moves to Nottingham for her new job in the HR department at Corp Co. She rents a new flat in the lace market, shiny, furnished and the size of a large shoebox. When Jane moves in, there's a letter waiting for her from Electra, the energy provider. But with many other things on her mind, she doesn't get round to looking at it for a month. It turns out the flat was built with an energy monitoring toolkit included that provides Electra with detailed real-time information on her power usage. Jane was supposed to pick an energy plan to go on when she moved in. Without it, Electra has put her on the default plan, which just so happens to be expensive. When she calls Electra, they use the data collected from her monitor to help recommend a better plan. The man on the phone seems to know more about Jane's lifestyle than she does. For a moment, she catches herself feeling guilty about not showering every day. With all the costs of moving, she chooses a low usage plan, which is cheap as long as she stays within its usage targets. In early October, temperatures drop and the new apartment seems to leak heat like a colander. Jane is constantly cold. As her thermostat rises, her energy use increases. At the end of the month, she receives a letter from Electra, advising that she is exceeding her current plan. Several options are recommended, from which Jane chooses to have Electra's energy management gizmo installed. This tablet device syncs with the energy monitoring system in the flat and provides energy advice via an animated cat character. Over the next couple of months, Jane tries to get used to following Gizmo's advice. It's often annoying though, like when she wants to wear her new shirt for work, but Gizmo frowns when at eight in the morning she tries to put it in the dryer. She ends up wearing the same outfit as yesterday and hoping that no one notices. Despite her best efforts, she still seems to be caught out regularly by Gizmo's demands. And, as they depend on what everyone else is doing at the moment, they're not always predictable. She also doesn't like the way he actively encourages her to use energy when it's cheap. It hardly seems environmentally friendly. In mid-November, Corpco suddenly moves Jane's office from the city centre to the outskirts. With no public transport stopping nearby, she needs a car. But the new city congestion charges mean that it will cost a bomb, unless she gets an electric vehicle. With the help of a government subsidy, she can just about afford the deposit to get one on credit. She gets the car linked to her energy plan, for which she has to set out the hours when it will be in use. Outside these usage hours, Electra will use the car's battery as a store for any excess energy on the grid, and as a source of energy during peak loads. As a result, when, two weeks later, Jane tries to get into work on a Saturday to meet a looming project deadline, she finds the car battery is flat. She has no option but to get on the bus and then walk the last 20 minutes in the freezing cold, muttering under her breath the whole way. In January, Jane's new boyfriend Kev begins to stay over more often. His flat is on the other side of the city and the arrangement suits them well. Gizmo is less pleased, however, about what this means for Jane's energy plan. Just having two people in the flat raises demand. Plus, Kev is not one for planning, or for that matter, being told what to do by a weird little green cat. Gizmo spends a lot of the following weeks frowning, and when Electra sends a letter warning Jane that she's outside her usage limits, her and Kev row. The guy on Electra's helpline suggests that Kev could bring his energy plan with him from his flat and merge it with Jane's. Kev agrees, but only after another row. When the end of the month comes round, Kev finds himself with two bills to pay, and another argument kicks off. Kev cancels the shared energy plan and starts spending more evenings down the pub. At least he doesn't have to pay the meter there. Jane starts wondering whether this living arrangement is worth the hassle. <laughs>